everyone, welcome to episode 10 of That's So You. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. And if this is your first time watching, thank you for hitting the play button. Uh, my name is Diane. You can find me on Ravelry as Mrs. You Makes. No, sorry. Ravelry as Yummy Triplet Mummy and Instagram as Mrs. You Makes. I'm also on um, Facebook as Mrs. You Makes as well. Um, most social media places, I'm either Mrs. You Makes or Yummy Triplet Mummy. There is also a um, Ravelry group for the podcast on Ravelry, of course, as Mrs. You Makes as well. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining me today. This is a mainly knitting podcast, though now and then I do show crochet projects and also my other handmade things such as um, stitch markers. Um, uh, it's been a while since I recorded last, I think maybe two or three weeks. Um, Mr. Yu has been working nights, so it's a lot harder to um, find an opportunity to record. I always find it a bit weird recording whenever there's other people in the house. So now he's back on the day shift and it's just myself and Little Miss who um, is currently sleeping. Um, I had hoped to film whilst she was awake but she had a um, mini meltdown a few minutes ago which um, led her to fall asleep so I might as well get it done now. Um, today is the... where's my phone? I don't know. It's the 11th of July I believe. It's almost 11.30. Um, we've had a good few weeks of sunshine and lovely heat and today it looks like it's going to rain. Um, yeah, so I would have liked to record on, on a much more brighter day, but might as well do it now just to make sure I get it done. Okay, um, so what do I have for you today? The usual stuff, um, done and dusted, on the needles... Um, no goodies um, today. I haven't had anything that's come in the post, though I am expecting something over the weekend. So you'll have to wait till, mm, you might have to wait till the next episode or I might do um, a sort of like a um, box opening type video for that. We'll see. Um, yeah, so I've got those um, waiting in the wings. And also the word for the month. I think that's what we'll have for today's episode. So let's get started with done and dusted. I've only have one finished project today. It is a design project. If you saw the last episode, you would have seen when I finished the first part of this. And it is my join the crew socks. Um, yeah, I finished these some time ago. These are the third sock in the um, Fairly Odd Sock, um, Fairly Odd Socks collection. The first two socks are currently being tested, so hopefully testing should be done by the end of the month. Um, I haven't started the fourth sock yet, but I'll talk more about that during the um, waiting and knowing section. So going back to these, um, the sock features a double cuff. Let's see. It has the eyelet feature on the leg and you have um, contrasting keel and toes. And on the other sock, it's exactly the same, but the colors have been swapped over. So these two fit together and how am I doing this? Those two go together there. Um, then I should have the yarn. The yarn I use for the cuffs, heels and toes were the minis I received in the Crochet Hook Club from For the Love of Yarn UK, which is an Etsy store. I believe the Daya is, I can't remember her name now, but I believe she's based in Scotland. And every month she has a um, crochet hook club where you receive a 
we have it here. You receive um, a polymer clay um, crochet hook and that comes along with a matching mini skein of yarn. So this is one of the hooks I received. I think this one went along with this. Yeah, that came together with that one. So it's one of the monthly ones. You can just kind of dip in and out whenever you want. So I've last year I got four of those so so sorry I was hearing all this noise ah it's the rain that's all the noise is it's just started raining throughout last year I think I got four of those in total so these were all the mini skeins I received with the um, crochet hooks um yeah and I just decided to put them in the socks this is a design that I'd been wanting to do for a while so I thought it would go perfect putting these um, minis together. The main um, yarn I've used is Lana Grossa, um, I think it's Harris and I can't remember the colorway it was one of the ones with a number doesn't have a name to it. Um, so yeah the name itself join the crew if you would remember, if you are a regular viewer, I released a cowl design um, a few months ago of the same name, Join the Crew, and that featured, um, I'll put a picture somewhere at the bottom, that featured um, triangles that were made up from different minis, and they also had this eyelet design as well. So they're kind of, not necessarily a matching project but I just thought similar sort of concept so I'll give it the same name um so yeah once I've made the fourth sock in the collection I will get this and the fourth sock tested and then when once they've all been tested um the pattern will be available for release so look out for that so that's the only finished object I have. Um, next for the whips, um, the oldest whip I have is one which I have not done any work on since um, I think it was the middle or towards the end of June. That is the um, texture tied sweater i had hoped to enter this into the brit knit cal which was hosted by amy florence who hosts the stranded podcast but um it got to the point where i realized i wasn't going to finish it on time unless i were to pull some all-nighters and i wasn't going to keep staying up all night just to try and get something done for a cow so i decided just to um leave it and just finish it in my own time but i haven't gotten back to it since then as i've been working on other projects um okay yeah so this is what i have i think the only extra bit i've done since the last episode i think was possibly the sleeve that's it so far so because um i wasn't 100 percent sure if the minis i have which were which are these which i'm going to use to work the rest of the body um wasn't 100 percent whether or not i would have enough to do the full length of the mini the full length of the body so i decided to work the sleeves and then whatever I have left over from the sleeves will just be added to the body if necessary because I don't really want to buy extra yarn to add into this. I want to try and use just what I've got here. So um, there's not much to say about that. Um, it's designed by Judy Brian or Brian. As you can see, it features a mock cable on one side and just stocking stitch on the other um yeah so all the yarn i'm using for this is yarn from british dyers or yarn companies that was the whole point of the cow so yeah not much to really say about 
that so i will try and get back to this a bit more soon once i've got a bit more headway on the next project i'm going to show you which is um a hint of summer um I keep dropping things i can't remember where i was up to the last time um i showed this but I am getting closer and closer to the end. So this is what I have so far. This is what I have so far. Um, I have probably about another, I think maybe another 10 or so stripes to do um, before I start to do the hem shaping. So yeah, this is in a hint of summer by Isabel Kramer. The yarn I'm using is um, Knit Picks Curio, which is a thread weight um, yarn. Um, the colorways are mm, cornmeal, and I think this is steel. Um, yeah, this is coming along very nicely. It's very simple to do. Um, it does get a little bit boring at times because it is just stocking stitch, which is why I started my next um, whip project. But then again, it's great for watching TV as well. The only issue I've had for this so far are the sides because you have to you do purl stitches to work a side st seam there's um this section here where parts of it just look very uneven and gappy and that's because on this section you're also changing um changing color and also having to make sure your work you work the colors um up the project so that um when you do get to the point of, i don't want to give too much away but when you do get to the point of changing color so that you're not actually tugging on the um, yarn or have pulling it too tight so you have to work the colors up um, the side so that it's in position when you do need to change shades and having that having to do that there and also i did have the stitch marker there as well it has created gaps in certain page places um it is getting a bit better now that i've worked out how best to do it and i've also taken the stitch marker out um so yeah it's a little bit better not as bad as before as you can see so I'll have to fix those gaps um, later on. The other side isn't so bad because I'm not having to do any sort of change the um, shades there. But um, I'm not sure if I were to ever do this again, there's a chance, I don't know, I could possibly just continue to work this in stocking stitch all around and then maybe um, just drop all the stitches there down and then use a crochet hook to pull them um, again so that way it might look a bit neater that's something that I could possibly think about doing maybe in the future for this or any other similar project um, I've tried this on as I've gone along and if you follow me on Instagram you would have seen a picture I posted there of me wearing it so the fit is great and um, the sleeves are a little tight but that's not so bad because I'm not sure if I'm going to do a long sleeve or do a short sleeve or just leave it like this and maybe just knit a couple of rows or just leave it like this and let it curl over um, I'm not sure yet there is someone on um, Ravelry. I think they did use the exact same yarn I've used and they just left their one The sleeves like this. So that's a possibility um, So as I said, it's not long until I finish the main part of the body and then start working the hem There are different options for the hem. You can have um, an asymmetrical hem so where the back is longer than the um, front or uh, the option for a ribbed hem. I think there's another option as well, but I can't remember what that is. Um, so yeah, I'm most likely going to go for the asymmetrical one. 
so just working on that bit by bit um because of the size i can't really take it anywhere it's mostly something i do at home and also because you're having to change um colors as well so it's one of those ones that i do when i'm just sitting at home mainly watching tv or when the children are just running around so definitely this should be done by the end of the month there's no reason why it shouldn't be okay i spoke about this briefly before my next whip um again if you follow me on instagram you would have seen a picture of this um i started it over the weekend it was just because i was bored with the other projects i had i wanted to do something but something that wasn't that didn't require too much mind power so i started a frankenstein stock these um the concept of this is just using scrap yarn to make socks and you just randomly add another skein so you're not trying to get any type of shade going or gradient or anything like that it's just whatever comes out comes out so for the moment i just put in my hand inside a bag i have with um leftover yarn and whatever comes out i use it unless the colors are too too similar so if the next one i pull out is another blue especially if it's a similar shade of blue i won't use it um i'll try and use get something um different to use instead so this is what i have so far this is rico design um i can't remember what specifically the yarn is i think it's superb print this is um Rico Design Line by Erica Knight. This is Rosie's Moments in um, Splashes of Colour. This is Malabrigo. I got this as a um, swap package um, in Archangel. This is Whimsy Yarns in Colours of the Underground. The blue is... Um, Nora George in sh um, 50 shades of blue and this one at the back at the top of the heel is also Malabrigo but I can't remember what the colorway was um so yeah this is really coming along nicely I did most of this over um Saturday and Sunday um so it's been put a little bit on hold now because I'm going back to working on hint of summer but this is just going to be there maybe any chance I get if I go out without the kids, on the bus, or walking to pick them up without my little miss with me, then I can just knit on this. But I think I've made a great start so far. And my plan would be to just make as many of those as possible so I can have socks to just mix and match together. Um, I think... Oh, I do have two more sort of webs to show you, but I'm just going to pop out quickly and I will be back. Right, so it's stopped raining now. I think it rained for about a minute or two and it's brightened up a little bit, which would be good if it does brighten up even more. So my final two sort of whips, um, if you've been watching for a while, at least of the past year or so, you know that I started a mitered square blanket. Um, so this is what I bring out now and then to show um since i always forget where i was the last time i showed this and i'm not going to go through every single color but the ones i know that i definitely haven't mentioned would be um what you? i'm sure this one which is all centrum um i'm not sure for the full name but i use this for my, I think it was my July, August um, shawl, which was the um, Linus on the line shawl. And this green one um, is Adriaphil Azura. Yeah. And um, this as well. This is one that I received in a swap. Um, it's a mix of two, this particular square is a mix of two 
yarns because I ran out of it and then I just added the extra bit there which is also Adriophil Azura as well but I can't remember what the name of the yarn is for this particular one so yeah so it's growing nicely but I really want to start getting this into a proper blanket because my plan is that I would like to make these for each of the kids um, I have four children for those of you who don't know um, with um, the boys the triplatas are six years old they'll be turning seven soon so my plan is that when they turn 10 I will start a blanket for each of them and then work on that slowly until they get to maybe 16 or 18 and that's when I'll give them the blankets seeing as there's three of them I want enough time to actually put work into it adding um, squares um, yeah and with little miss being two there's a few more years before I start making her one so that gives me around three years until I make a start on their blanket so I have three years to get this and the crochet one done so I want to get as much work on it as possible so then possibly if I finish it before then I'll just make a start to their blanket so that's what I have so far yeah and I'm now going to make more of an effort to add squares onto this um, the other one I have is a crochet one um, now initially I did start a similar crochet one in crochet but the I'll put a picture if I can get one but the um, squares were going more like this so it was going across like this so more uh, like diamond um, shaped instead um, but I just wasn't really feeling it and um, working in that way meant a lot of the time I would be adding um, yarn in and then there wasn't enough to finish off that particular square and being crochet it uses up a lot more yarn so I decided to just rip that out and start again just doing a regular granny square crochet but so I'm just going round and round and round until it gets big enough so this is what I now have with the yarns that I frogged and have worked into this new square the center one is um, third volt yarns um, echo DK I think it's something like Icelandic skies something like that these two I received in swaps this is dream in color this one I cannot remember the name of it this is sublime I think and this one is um, whimsy this is the same one as this one here so those two top ones it's hard to see because it's being blown out with the light so this and this are the same so it's nice to see how what, how different it looks in um, crochet compared to um, knitting so yeah that's what I've done so far with the squares that I ripped out of the original blanket so I think I prefer just going round and round in a circle because then once it's done you just move on to the next um, ball and you don't have to worry about not finishing a particular square so yeah they are all of my current whips that I have um, in terms of in terms of other projects, um, the only um, the only waiting in the wings that I really have would be the fourth sock in the collection. I'm still deciding what yarn to use for that. I have an, one particular idea that I might use. It's just the colours that I want to have in this. I just need one more colour too that will work well with them. There's another one, but that would mean buying a whole lot more yarn than... I've estimated that that I would need and I don't want to um, do that either so they're the main two I've seen that actually fit the color profile that I am looking for so 
by the end of the week I should have decided and hopefully bought that and so either the weekend or during next week I will make a start to the fourth sock in the collection and then aim to finish that by the end of the month or at least by the beginning of August. Um, yeah, school holidays, the summer holidays are coming up so I'll have to try and get as many of these projects done by then, especially texture tie. That's the only one that requires a bit of um, brain power because of the um, mock cabling in it. The rest of the projects I have are pretty much mindless TV knitting where I can just ignore everything going on around me. So they're not so bad to be working on during the holidays, but texture tied definitely. I want to get as much as that done before the holidays come along because six weeks surrounded by children. I don't know how teachers do it, seriously. I don't know if I could be a teacher. People sometimes tell me I should go into teaching, but oh, I'm sorry, no. Having four at home is enough, but being surrounded by a class of 20 plus, no, no, no. Okay, they definitely need to be paid more money. Um, okay, oh, before I move on to what's next? The word for the month, because as I said before, I don't have any goodies. Um... I just want to mention a bit of an issue I've had with some of my other um, handmade socks. Um, this is, you can see, I made this, I think it was like October, November, I think this was, no, December. Yeah. And I've hardly worn this. As you can see, I haven't sewn any ends, but I've hardly worn this because they are so itchy these as soon as i put them on within a few seconds i can just feel everything just scratching uh, my feet the yarn i used for these were um drops fable and i don't know why it just feels itchy on my skin i don't know if it's the yarn um, I blocked it, same thing. I blocked it again using a wool wash, still um, the same itchiness. Even the second time, I actually properly washed it, like poured the wool wash onto the socks, squeezed it through, made sure everything went through the fibers, did it properly. It still feels itchy and scratchy. Um, when I wear it so I don't know what's happening there I don't know if it's just that I'm sensitive to whatever is inside these or what if anybody has used drops fable before please tell me how you um how you find wearing these because there was another sock I have that I used drops fable with and that's fine that was the um I think of my November socks and the one I used was the um, it was a self patterning sock and that's fine I don't find it itchy I can even wear it in shoes and it's not itchy but this one which I think is unicolor um, yeah drops fable unicolor um, it's itchy I mean you can see the different dye lots, that's why the colours look different. But yeah, these are so itchy when I wear them. And the other one that's kind of itchy, I'm just going to try them on quickly, are these. These are West Yorkshire spinners. Let me see. Actually, this isn't so bad when I wear it sometimes. But because the... Um, the cuffs, heel cuffs and um, toes are with Drops Fable as well. It does feel a little bit itchy, especially around my legs here where the cuffs are. So I don't know if it's just that particular um, brand or that particular yarn from the company that's giving me issues. 
but yeah it just feels itchy but this one specifically i don't even have to walk i can just put them on and i'll sit there and it's like my whole leg is like somebody's there scratching it so yeah has anyone else had an issue with these because i don't like the fact that they're just sitting in my sock box not being worn but then even if i ripped them out i'm not going to use them for anything because of how itchy they are and there's no one else unless i give it to someone else but what's to say that it's not going to itch them as well so that's my problem has anybody else had this issue if so were you able to sort it out if not then i might just pass them on to someone else so at least see if someone else can get some kind of use from them because yeah i've actually never worn them since i made them um i've put them on and then walked to another part of the flat and then had to rip them off again because they were so itchy but yeah i've never actually worn them properly and that's a shame because of all the work that went into um making them yeah, hopefully someone else can make use of them if I can't. Right. Um, yeah, that's all the sort of knitting related stuff that I have. Um, hopefully next week I'll have more to show because... Not next week, next episode. I'm hoping by then I would have finished A Hint of Summer and at least made some sort of headway if not finished my fourth socks. Um, so yeah, I haven't had, didn't have any notes today, so sorry if it's been a bit bleh. Um, is that everything? It seems very short. Yes, that is everything. I know what it is, it's the fact that I don't have goodies, usually. It's the goodies that bulk things up a bit, but yeah. The goodies are not here right now, so the next episode, there will be some goodies to show you. I promise you that I will have some goodies next week so I will pack up these things and come back to you with the word for the month and it's raining again okay so yeah typical British weather we'll have two weeks of bright lovely sunshine and then a few days of rain <sighs> let's hope this finishes before I pick up the triple artists from school right the word for the month this is the part of the podcast where I share something from scripture. If this is not for you, you are more than welcome to say goodbye at this point. Um, if you are going, then please do come back for the next episode. And don't forget to check out um, the Ravelry group, which is, as I said, is Mrs. You Makes. Um, there you will also find the show notes. Also check out the other videos I have on the channel for um, recipes and crafty tutorials. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the episode and I hope to see you again. Hi, it is now um, July the 12th. It's uh, just almost quarter past 11. Um, I did record the word for the month yesterday. But when I looked back at it, it just seemed a bit too waffly for my liking. So I decided to do it again. And this time I actually have notes with me just to reduce all the waffling. Okay, um, if you can hear some sound and talking in the background, that's Little Miss. She is using the um, her brother's tablet just to watch some YouTube stuff. She's become a little bit obsessed now to the point where she does actually look for the tablet when we get home and um, stuff. And she um, has worked at how to get onto YouTube. So I've had to hide the tablet to stop her from overusing it. So yeah, she's keeping herself distracted with that for the moment. So the word for the month is Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 which reads Above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So what does it mean to guard your heart? Well there are many um, things that can affect us physically in terms of our health and our um, well-being. 
And in order for us to protect ourselves from those things, it involves making the right decisions when it comes to what we eat and what we drink and aspects of our lifestyle. So it's the same when it comes to our hearts. And I don't mean it doesn't mean heart in a physical sense, but heart in a spiritual sense, in that there are certain things we have to be careful of what we allow to um, affect us. And those things can be um, caused by what we allow in or what comes out of us. So for example, doing things such as um, gossiping, um, complaining, causing discord in situations, they're things that can affect our hearts because we're building up a negative atmosphere or negative environment um, around us. Also, whole, um, anger and bitterness can affect our hearts because you're holding this thing against the person and when you have bitterness or anger towards someone, you're consumed by thoughts of maybe doing things to try and get um, back um, at them. And also pride can be another thing that can have an effect on us because it leads you to think that you're maybe better than another person or maybe you're to um, a particular task that you've been given is beneath you. So, you know, why should I do that because I'm better doing, than doing that thing? Or why should I listen to that person because um, I know how to do it better than them? Just because they're maybe in a um, position above me, why should I listen to them? I should be in that position. So those things are things that build up negativity around us, build up negativity around others. They put us in a position where maybe our thinking um, can lead us to want to do something. And then when that thinking continues and builds up, we might end up then doing it. So going back to anger, for example, if you're angry, angry at someone who's hurt you, you can begin to have thoughts of wanting to get back at them. And if that anger continues to build up, you can in the end actually go through whatever, with whatever plan um, that whatever it was that you planned to do. So that in then continues to build up that anger within you because the fact that you've now done that thing to somebody, it doesn't suddenly make you feel okay and better and you've forgotten what they do. You still remember what that person um, did to you. So the anger and bitterness doesn't go away and it continues to eat um, at you. So when you guard your heart, it just means that when you're in a situation or position where you start having those thoughts or feelings, it's just about recognizing that they are there and then not dwelling on those things. So if you are angry at somebody, it comes down to just forgiving the person because when you forgive somebody, it's not about excusing what they've done to you or saying that it's okay. Forgiving someone is about um, just not allowing that thing to consume you and not constantly thinking about what that person did and what you need to do to get back at them. It's about not allowing it to constantly be on your mind and take all of your energy. When it comes to things like gossiping and complaining and causing problems within, let's say, work environment, it's about recognizing the fact that you are maybe about to start talking about someone and then just say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to get into that kind of conversation because bringing out and gossiping about someone or just um, to take, getting involved in that conversation about someone, you're now bringing up a negativity against another person. And you may not even know what you're saying or what the other person is saying to you is true, but it builds up discord within that environment, especially if the other person finds out um, what's been going on or even complaining you just bring those people around you um, down you're bringing more negativity into the situation so in those um, situations it's best to just recognize that you're about to do those things and just stop yourself just say look I don't need to talk about this particular person or be part of this conversation or instead of complaining about um, what's happening around you, try and find a way to make the situation better, try and see what you can do to improve the situation, bring a solution instead of joining in the pity party um, with regard with what's going on. If you do feel that maybe a situation is beneath you or wonder why someone else is um, 
someone who you think isn't as good as you are is giving you um, instructions on what to do or um, maybe it's your boss or manager or something like that instead of you sitting there thinking well I'm better than them I'm too good to do this particular job just do the job because that's what you're there to do if you feel you can do a better job then it's up to you to show that you can do better and put yourself in a position where you can then be the one who's maybe on top or just realize everybody has a job to do everybody has a purpose not everybody's going to be on top sometimes it's just about being humble and realizing that you know what in this particular situation i'm not the one um it's not all about me it's about the team it's about the bigger picture this is what i need to do to contribute to what's happening so it's just about looking at yourself and making sure you don't allow certain thoughts and feelings to affect your actions because then when that happens it affects those people around you and speaking as a believer when you um have those kind of attitudes where um that's building up negativity and all these things it does harden your heart and it makes it harder for you to hear the word it makes you harder to hear god speaking it makes it harder for you to hear other people who are giving you advice and guidance because you have built up this attitude of either anger or pride um constant complaining things like that they've begun to build up within you that it makes it harder for you to see the great things that are happening around you it makes it harder for you to hear um, the word and to hear God's voice um, calling and directing you but when you guard your heart those things that happen around you you know how to quench them and stop them before they have too much of, of an effect on you on you and that opens you up to be able to hear the words to be able to hear the voice of God to be able to take advice and leading and guidance from other people and to then make your situation better um, so I hope this month going forward that we can all guard our hearts and look to those things that create positivity around us, that create encouragement around us and for other people as well. Bye. Um, so hopefully that will be an encouragement for you um, for this month. Um, again, I hope to see you again next time for the next episode and I hope you have a great week. Bye.